How's it going everybody? I'd like to welcome you back to our Enterprise Layer 2 section and in this video we're going to be taking a look at our next topic which is going to be VTP or the VLAN trunking protocol. Now in VLAN trunking this is probably one of the harder topics for individuals that I've been teaching for a while to understand is the concept of being able to propagate VLANs between switches dynamically. Now, there are multiple ways of doing this. We're going to be taking a look at the CLI variation of this, but there was, back in the day, the VMPS, the VLAN Management Port, uh, port Server, I think it was, but nowadays, it's you can use Cisco ICE uh, and Cisco ACS, which most people use ICE nowadays, to go ahead and apply a port to a VLAN and stuff like that. So, what we're going to be doing is in, in our current design, we have uh, switch 30 and 31 have been configured with switch uh, VLAN 12, and every port in this environment here has been configured with a tr with trunking. On switch 29, we have one VLAN called VLAN 11, and that's been applied to gig 1/0 and 1/1, so that 25 and 26 can communicate, and 27 and 28 can communicate. What we're going to go do is we're going to go on 30 and 31. And we're going to create, well, we're going to configure one of these guys to be, uh, create the VLAN of VLAN 12. Or um, set the, the domain, which is going to push that information down to 29. 29 is going to be configured as a client. So we're going to do that first, because we want to make sure to prevent problems uh, from happening. So in other words, we don't want an access layer switch to be able to modify the VLAN database. So we're going to go in and we're going to configure that. We're going to get him up and running to where 30 or 31, whichever switch I happen to click on, we're going to create, the VLAN's already there, so it should propagate that down, but we're going to need to specify the do a VTP domain name, which is in this case here is just going to be uh, ENT. We're going to push that information down here to 29. 29 is going to get that, and we're going to place gig1 slash 1 inside of VLAN 12, change its IP address to be in the same subnet as 26 and 27, and then they'll be able to communicate. And that's the goal here. So with that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at that actually being configured. So on 29, we're going to go ahead and type in BTP mode is going to be client. And then on 30, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to type in uh, BTP domain is going to be ENT. So that changes that. And then we go down to 29 and we do a show VTP status. We should see ENT has now been configured. And if we show VLAN brief, we have VLAN 12 has been propagated. Now you'll notice that um, VLAN 12 was created, but notice VLAN 11 is gone, like gone, gone. So that's a, an inherent problem that I wanted you guys to see in terms of how VTP can work. So if we look at the show run interface gig one slash zero, we can see that this guy's actually inside of VLAN 11. But there is no VLAN 11 present here. Rut row, not that big of a deal. You can go on switch 30 and create VLAN 11. So we'll just create VLAN 11. We'll give it a name of R25, R26. We'll go ahead and do that. We'll go back to 29, we'll hit the up arrow. 27, 11's back now. Don't worry, don't freak out. We're all good. So, but those type of things can happen. I've actually seen entire VLAN databases get wiped out. It's a bad day if you end up wiping out an entire VLAN database. It happens. What do you do? You copy and paste in your VLAN database again. You know, I've seen multiple companies do this, and oftentimes it's um, it doesn't take long to just type in VLAN and you just type a whole bunch of them in a row and then you just start banging them out, uh, create a few, and then you're good to go. So if that happens to you, I feel sorry for you, but there are multiple ways to recover that. Now, what I'm going to go do is on um, switch 29, I'm going to go to uh, interface gig 1 slash 1, type in switch port access VLAN 12 switch port mode is well, actually it's already been set so do show vlan brief and now we can see that gig one slash one's been placed inside of vlan 12. so now if i go over to r26 
type in interface key zero slash zero. I type in IP address of 10.1.2.26 slash 24 and do ping 10.1.2.27. Give that a second for ARP to go resolve and guess what? I can ping. If I go to 28, I can ping. Now, if I try to go ping 10.1.25, not so much. And again, that has to do with the fact that gig 1 slash 1 has now been placed inside of VLAN 12. Gig 1 slash 0 is inside of VLAN 20, or VLAN 11. They're two different subnets. It's not going to work. But that's really all you need to worry about in terms of that propagation. Now, let's take a look at something on 29 real quick. Let's try to go ahead and delete VLAN 11. So, uh, no VLAN 11. <gasps> Ooh, VTP VLAN configuration is not allowed when device is in client mode. Oh, now I could override that by typing VTP mode server, reissuing that same command again, and VLAN 11 goes bye bye. I don't want to do that, especially when I'm in a client mode. It's not something you want to allow people to do. Is there any way for you to prevent that from happening? not directly off the iOS or from CLI. You'd have to go use a technique known as TACAX with authorization to where you'd be able to say, you know what? That command is not an authorized command. So, yet, no, no bueno, not gonna happen. So, that's gonna be the one main thing that you're gonna wanna remember is when you're in client mode, you can't make VT VLAN specific command changes if you want to change something, you have to go to the VTP server to do that. And that's one way of doing it. So what I'm going to go do is I'm actually going to show you some stuff about the VTP. So show VTP status. So here we are. We have multiple VLAN or VTP versions that we can run. We're running currently in one, but we can run in three. V VTP version three is the newest version, obviously. And it allows some advanced capabilities, like being able to turn VTP off completely, being able to, to do advanced authentication and things like that. I'm not going to really get into too much of the, the weeds on VTP v3 because there's plenty of material out online for you to go read up on that. We have uh, the domain is the, the domain name has been set. Currently, we are in configuration revision two. Simply, that means we've gotten two updates. That's it. So every time you get an update, whether it's an add, a delete, or a modify, whatever that might look like, you get a configuration revision. The configuration revision always increments by one for every type of change you get. So if you deleted a VLAN, then you added a VLAN, and then you renamed a VLAN, guess what? That's three changes. And then you would see the number of VLANs might go up or down, and this is how many VLANs are supported locally. That's a lot of VLANs. Most switches don't support that many. Uh, but then again, these are virtual switches, so they have support, uh, support a lot. Do I have I ever seen a network with that many VLANs? No, I think at the most I've seen is probably 200 ish, and we had lots of problems in that network. So, very, very poorly designed environment. I did a lot of work to try to remedy that, but um, the folks that put the ad environment in decided to go with a uh, campus uh, campus network solutions, switch uh, trunking and VLANs and VTP and stuff like that in a data center where they really needed to have other techniques in place. Uh, you can do some level of uh, modification with that type of stuff with trunking, uh, trunking, uh, trunk allowed this, but at the end of the day, it gets kind of kludgy in how you do stuff. So, uh, it does. It just doesn't make a lot of sense. If you don't need to have it there, don't put it there. So I'm a big proponent of put things in play that make sense in that particular environment. Having campus, campus layer networks, um, their solutions, VLAN spanning tree, and the trunking, it doesn't make a lot of sense inside of a data center. There's much more efficient ways of doing stuff than that, but I rest my case. So... That's basically how this would come into play. That's VTP in a nutshell. There's a ton of other things you can play around with it, but this is going to give you the the Cliff Notes version of what you need to know about, about VTP. 
it can break your network if you're not smart or if you're not careful. So I definitely recommend you be both in terms of setting up a VTP environment. I've seen a lot of environments turn it off. And the way if you wanted to turn it off, you type in VTP mode of transparent. This is basically saying, you know what? I don't care what updates you send me. So if we do show VTP status, guess what? The configuration revision changed to zero. The number of VLANs has stayed. Now if I was to go ahead and say no VLAN 11, I can't control it being deleted, right? So I'm just gonna go ahead and create VLAN 11 and I'll be squared away there, but that just gives that just goes to show you how that would come into play. So that's pretty much it. Um, so in the next video, we have Spanish Air Protocol, where I will be setting up a couple more VLANs and we'll be configuring the switches to be, I'm gonna, I'm gonna create VLANs on purpose to show you the, how you can use Spanish Tree to load balance and stuff like that in terms of its operations and stuff like that. But that's gonna basically how, how we go about forward Moving forward with Spanish Tree Protocol, we're going to, um, the initial Spanish Tree version on this one, at least the last time I checked, was Rapid, which is the way it should be in general terms, but Spanish Tree Protocol has been around forever. Not that big of a deal. So, until next time, guys, thanks so much for stopping by, and we'll catch you guys in the next video.